Hey guys, are you looking to uh, generate your favicon for Blazor uh, WebAssembly or Blazor Server using Azure Static Web, web Apps? Um, well, this will be a quick little video showing you how to do this. Not only is this useful for Blazor WebAssembly and Blazor Server in like an Azure uh, or AWS type of or GCP cloud deployment, it could be used for any website or progressive web app that you want icons generated for that works across all platforms, um, including how that icon looks on iOS when installed as a PWA um, and on Windows 11 as a favorite on your desktop, all the way to if you pin it in uh, Windows you know, 10 or 11 as a PWA. So really a one-stop shop. So uh, I'll just switch to this. And uh, this is a website that um, I use. There's a bunch of them out there, but I just personally have used this probably over the past I don't know, eight years or something like that. And it's been extremely amazing, reliable, and uh, shout out to these guys, they are incredible. Um, so you can check, um, but you know, essentially uh, you're gonna probably create some kind of image that you want as a logo to represent whatever web application you're creating. Um, so I'll just switch here. I will pick the image. And this is the one I want to go to for the Enable App website. All right, so it has a, so your picture is this. Um, what it's highly recommended to have that. So um, what, I'll, what I'll do is after the video, uh, create a better higher resolution version, uh, but for now I'll stick with this. But that's a great uh, warning that they are, this particular real favicongenerator.net website is kind of prepping you for a perfect um, scenario example image. They, they want everything um, to look polished and professional um, so yeah, shout out to them on this. So I'm gonna say continue. All right, so now we get all of these great wizard-like customization items. Since I picked a logo that has a um, transparent background, um, you know, maybe maybe if you, you're like, oh, um, I, well, I wanted it to be white. You can, you know, add those, I believe, as you go through. Let me just see here. Yeah, that will add black. And then if you wanted, you know, have a color picker here that'll be good um, you know you can play with it so what's nice is normally what I find is if you upload the transparent uh, background one you can kind of play with it to see how it looks here which is nice um, I'll just use it as is um, let's just uh, we'll actually just see what this that's pretty god-awful but let's just see what the border radius does uh, uh, it's cool <laughs> like it, it'll put a nice little that's kind of nice um, image size yeah, it makes sense. So probably what I want to do is grab from, let's just see what that would look like. Right. So like if you wanted to give it like a drop shadow, you could probably do something like that. And that's kind of nice. Like it kind of makes it stand out. Um, and for now, we'll just go with as is. Uh, next up, we have the favicon for iOS web clip. So this is how it's going to look. Um, you can change it to use it like that or use, um, you know, transparent with black. Um, you know, if you don't want to do that, what you want to do is have a solid color logo, like something like that for messages where I'm using a gradient. Um, so they are two in this example. So you'd want to make sure that gradient goes edge to edge in your example. Generally the square ones work really well because you could always kind of like in the case of iOS, it takes care of the, you know, the radius or the rounded corners on its own, where in the case of, you know, uh, desktop browsers and Google result pages, you can kind of play with those, right? Um, generally, the more kind of control you have over the final outcome of the branding of your web application or site, the better. So you're going to want to factor that in over time if that's um, important to you. So I'm gonna say, pick that, and I'm gonna create for all of these. Dedicated picture, that's kinda nice that you can actually upload it, a dedicated picture. And let me just see margin, right? So 
it had it like you know probably something like something that looks okay so let me see if that looks good a little tight on the right hand side right there so I'll go down a little it should be good there um, and I mean it isn't centered so that that would, that would bug me but to each their own um, so you know just showing you how to do this stuff um, okay so nope um, and favicon for Android now it's got this we could say um, like that and we can make it bigger right but I'm gonna say no keep it transparent which is nice add a slight oh, hold on a second, cancel add a slight drop shadow um, it did, does make it smaller so I'm gonna say no keep it like that and this is enable app we'll maybe make it one word um, well the other ones have well YouTube's like that but that's okay I'll keep it like that um, and then the theme color I do have the theme color so let me just uh, pause the video and get that all right so back in an instant um, I went upstairs and made myself a sandwich no I'm just kidding but um, yeah it was probably like three minutes random information that could be helpful probably not uh, okay so cool so the theme color makes sense like to keep it the same blue like you could switch it to something else which that is what's gonna happen um, we look at that and it doesn't show it here maybe that's something that they're working on okay and then compared to what I had here um, it's okay I'll probably keep it at white why not um, that you can't change and we're going to say uh, standalone yep that makes sense and the start URL um, basically I'm not going to override that I'm gonna keep that blank because I want this file or the web manifest.json um, will be created which is essentially a file that points to all of the different um, assets for the PWA and the favicon um, I'm just I'm gonna let this package generate it itself um, in the past I've had some issues when I've like typed in the URL manually and that typically results from um, PWA installs that are coming from the triple W dot I guess in this case enableapp.com or enableapp.com so I don't want to over I just want to have that take it inherently from the URL of the website as it's being run because you might want to run that from multiple URLs um, not specific um, um yeah i mean it's okay i don't think people install this as a pwa but they can uh, modern versions create all document icons declare icon in html uh, that's fine dedicated picture which is nice and then we'll go down now windows metro we're going to let's see if we can paste in that color again um again i don't know like maybe it looks make makes sense to do something different but you know generally I'll keep it the same as above and it's kind of weird ah, okay all right let's go here and we'll say create all this stuff and all this right to a good picture you can do that if you want and so this guy here silhouette around original image dedicated picture um, it's weird that it doesn't come through on this so we'll end of original image works well with significant yeah, interesting last time I ran that it, it actually showed the logo there so maybe no no it's not affecting that okay so that's fine we'll just keep it let's see if we can do that yeah, it seems to be I'm sure it'll generate fine but it's not generating the right color um, all right so uh, path so basically if you want to generate like a version number for this um, you know to reduce caching um, generally you have to ask clients and customers or whoever or have an automatic cache refresh uh, you know set up for your PWA in order for you to you know do some of this stuff so adding the version number and whatever at the end is kind of a easy hack to get around that um, compression um, I generally you know don't go with that way um, so that's fine uh, no app name let the browser offer the app page title 
no, I'm going to say that. It's fine. Um, don't need that. And this, I will place all that stuff at the root of, um, oh no, I do actually want to place it somewhere else. So um, my path is going to be, um, let me just this, minimize that hit here in blazer. And my path is going to be the root and then um, favicon, I'm not going to have that there. Let's say delete. Um, and I'm going to say image and favicon. So can I copy path, copy full path? Yeah, no, I'm sure it's fine. So, we'll f so yeah, it's just a slash image favicon. Okay. Slash image favicon. No slash at the front. Let's just see. No. Okay. And then we'll say generate. Now they have all of these different cool ways to like bring this stuff in automatically. Like these guys are, it's just so amazing. I'm sure that there's other great options out there, but um, I would not be surprised if 50% of the world, uh, maybe 40% of any um, web application developer that uses a favicon generator site is using this site. It is great. Comment down below if you're using um, real favicon generator.net and you like it and have any kind of cool uh, features of this website that I haven't talked about that I could personally learn from and use and the community would be much appreciated to have that information in the comments as a one-stop shop for generating your favicons. Um, so you're going to download package and um, I will get that in a second. And then I'm going to copy this code here and then go back to here. And I have like a spot here, I just put it, right? So I'm gonna paste that there. Um, and it should be going up to that route, which it is very nice, very clean. Um, you can tell that this makes me happy, this generator site. Um, it'd be nice to be able to hit it from an API as opposed to going into it, uh, like from a pipeline, but I think they offer that at the end, uh, some kind of hooks. So uh, next up, I'm going to just pause the video and drop in that package here. All right, back in an instant, and I will paste this guy here, and I will extract all and I do not want to show. And we can get rid of the zipped file at that point. And we don't want to add this layer of nesting. So what we're going to do is go up here. We're going to cut. And oh, by the way, I, I, for anyone that's developing uh, Blazor hybrid apps or something similar in .NET MAUI and .NET 6 and 7, um, they have a great kind of way of automating all of the different icons you need to push to all of the different targeted platforms right within, I think, the CS proj file, which is, which is great because at the end of the day, I know it's nice that we create all of these for all of these different scenarios. However, I really don't feel like any developer really wants to, they don't wake up in the morning and be like, oh, I can't wait to generate slightly different variants of the same thing all day long for a bunch of different projects. So uh, any and all initiative or help that we could provide to the community to automate all of this is gonna be life-changing for most of us. So I'm gonna paste here, gonna delete. I can just close that now and it should be in there now. I have all that stuff. And uh, what I'm gonna do without warning a thing, let me just take a look at this real quick. Um, all right, so there's that. Favicon is here. That's the very first inception. You kind of need that regardless uh, for compatibility reasons, all this stuff. Site.web manifest, right? Um, and it kind of grabs it in that location, uh, going to the root and working way up. So uh, the theme color, the background color, it's okay, we'll keep that as is. And we just wanna see if the manifest is anywhere else in this file, in the current document. Uh, 
And so let's just do a start, see how it looks. Don't know yet. See, that's like, like the, oh, there it is. So it just popped in after, maybe it did a cache refresh. So if I go to inspect, and let's just make sure that we empty cache and hard reload, and just make sure that I do currently have console errors in this project, um, you know, these two, but they are unrelated to the web manifest stuff. And you can kind of go over here and see on the manifest side, the stuff here, the icons, yeah, so everything looks good. Um, you know, I, I don't think I set this one up for PWA, so that's it. So basically, you know, you're gonna get this guy here and every like flavor and variant um, across um, the, the different, um, you know, devices, whether iOS, Android, um, all that stuff. So um, yeah, um, if you found this helpful, um, you know, please leave a like, a comment, or a subscribe, and uh, you know, I'll see you next time on a hopefully another helpful uh, .NET Core or sorry .NET 7 uh, Maui or Blazor WebAssembly uh, video. And yeah, have a good day.